I think we're yeah we're on now. Uh, you can uh, let me roll see. Roll in everyone. Almost roll over in a second. Hi Gloria. Who's Gloria? You know Gloria. Who's Gloria? Friends of ours that moved to Florida. Oh really? You know her. She's the glass sculpture. All the beautiful oh, oh, glass all sculptures. The glass sculptures. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you say so. Okay. So anyway, uh, we she even called uh, your show once. Huh? She called your show she once. She did, didn't she? Yeah, Gloria, call again. Yeah, call again. Anyway, uh, you can, I think, come over here. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to hi, just, folks. How I'm, are you? I'm just rolling on down. I, I got to tell the people on the uh, on the uh, watching us that uh, this is uh, we're. Uh, uh, we're, we're doing the TV version of our show, and it takes a me a little while to get things really going here because this is like a one-man TV thing, TV yes, operation is. here. Uh, and, oh, and there, we're, there we are. There we go. Hi. Okay, anyway. Uh, see, okay, guys, call in. Mm -hmm. and now I'm it's only good for another seven now, minutes. Now it's a matter of people calling into the program. Look, I'm closer mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a matter of people calling the program, and uh, we don't know if they will or they won't, you know. And I sit here waiting, and I, I keep ad-libbing and uh, passing, you know. Gas. Gas. No. <laughs> just keep telling the stories about what's going on. Well, I see Phil Meyer is now getting online, which Where means he? he'll probably Where be do, the first caller. How do you caller. know when he's getting online? See? Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Phil. Well, you can't say hi to Phil yet. He's he can not hear on. us, though. And maybe he can, and maybe he can't, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, our number is, if you want to use a Skype, it's, you use the Skype lines when you call uh, Gabnet Live. Hello, Phil. You're the, hi, Phil. You're the first, hey. one, you're, uh, you're, this you're, is you're the first one tonight. And yeah. uh, let me see. Let me put this on. Wait, you don't do that. I need a tissue here. We're not a used not one. Not one that's used. Uh -huh. Thank you, Phil. Well, I oh, by the way, my daughter is uh, just left today for Hong Kong. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, she's going to be there for the weekend, I think. A weekend? Wow. That's, yeah. She's well, five hours for... less than we are. I mean, it was 15 hours. She still has a 10-hour flight. Uh, she's, and she's, well, she's going from L.A., but it's still uh, ten hours. Yeah, she, uh, ten hours uh, more than she, that. Well, her, no, no, no. She, he's five hours closer. Oh, he is five. Right. Yes, he. Is. Yeah. He's, no, uh, no, she works for Variety. And uh, so Variety's having an event over there, and uh, she's uh, she got to work it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I had to work it too. We had a conference. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, a couple of weeks ago she went to New York for a variety event, and it's now great. Hong Kong. Variety, that's the one we. It's the paper. The, the, yeah, we uh, get it online. Variety, we don't get variety. Yes, you do. No, we don't. We watch. We look at Deadline. I look Dead, at Variety. I subscribe to Variety. It's free. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's too bad. I, I'd like it to at least get some revenue. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so nobody's calling tonight, huh? Is that what it's going to be? We're doing TV night and nobody's going to call. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's not early, but um, I think what happens is people It used to be that when I used to go on the air, right? Yeah. As soon as I said the lines are open, we had it's nine people. Up. Yeah, it filled up. And, and everybody has just kind of given up on us, I think. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Well, you There's know. A lot of people you watching. Know, a lot I of have listeners. a commitment. Huh? You know, I said I said I would be your best uh, 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 citizen panelist, and, and you and, are. And and so I made a commitment, and I keep my commitment. Yes, you do. Yes, yes you, do. you do. Thank you, Phil. All right. I keep mine, and mine are good for about another three and a half minutes. <laughs> See, and then she goes, and then it's just you and me, Phil. All right. Well, we got we got stuff to talk about. Yeah. I went to the iPhone store, uh, AT and T, and was on the phone with iPhone with with Apple for an hour to get my, what? Well, my six uh, plus uh, iPhone uh, this afternoon started destroying itself. It started flashing. It started ma it, taking pictures on its own. It started really? calling people. It was like it was possessed. So, I. I uh, I call them. I, I have said, never heard of that. Happening. I haven't either. It's well, wild. The people at the AT and T store said they have, and uh, and they said it was quite common. 
Uh, well, anyway, my now, iPhone. How long have you had this? This is the one when I have the this six, is the six, uh, six plus X. Six. No, it's not the S. It's the six plus. That's okay, so no, we have one more. We have a year With later. Six yeah. S plus. Right. So yeah. I've had it uh, over a year because it's not under warranty. But for one reason or another, I decided to take the insurance, and uh, uh, it. it cost yeah. me uh, one hundred and twelve dollars. Uh, to replace the phone, which they're going to send to me. But it's only good two for days. two more years, right? Uh, I, w I was, say it again? When you get the insurance, that, that still runs out at some point. No, for as long as I pay this, it's with AT&T. For as long as I pay the $7 a month oh. or 8 bucks a month, oh. uh, phone's insured and they'll replace it. Uh, or fix and, it. and I would suggest that for people who are on plans like at least we're on, which is we buy we, t a two-year commitment. No, they're stopping that. But no, no. We let me finish what I'm saying. You're like uh, him. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If if you have the two-year commitment, and let's say halfway through it, you lose your phone, your phone breaks, you can't use your phone, you still have the commitment. Right. But you don't have a phone. Well, so yeah. that's why you get it insured, because they will replace the phone. Oh, I see what you're saying. But they're, yeah. doing, with, they're doing away with the two years. Now it's just leasing. Yeah. Well, this is what happened. Uh, I thought I, I laid out four ninety nine when I bought the phone, and I thought I bought the phone. Well, it turned, and they said, well, you have another 10 months to go on your commitment. And I said, what do you mean? I, I, I didn't have uh, a thing. I bought the phone. I spent, you know, whatever I spent. And, uh, I, you know, I bought this phone. They said, no, uh, four ninety nine plus tax and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, the phone's 900 and something. And uh, I had to have a two-year contract to uh, to pay for the phone. It was a buy down from nine something to yeah, four ninety nine five hundred. Right, right. Yeah. So. I didn't know that. I thought I paid for the phone. I thought phone was six fifty, and that was that. What, what However, you what you didn't know is suspension, vacation, vacation suspension. We had a couple people that left our office, and the phones were still under the contract. Yeah. And I was able to put it for ten dollars a month under vacation suspension till the end of their term. Well, I, I'm, I don't the end want of that to contract. But you know, I wanted another phone now. Yeah. And uh, so I, when I called Apple, and an hour I was on there with iTunes and the computer and this, that, and the other thing, and the restore. Well, uh, so they went, they restored the phone, and it was still doing the same thing. It was freezing up. I, I you know, it was the thing was flashing. It was doing all sorts of stuff. So they said, oh, it's a hardware issue. So I said, okay. I said, who can get me uh, fixed faster? And they said, well, Wednesday we can get you in with a genius. Of course. I said, well, you know, I said, I need the phone. You know, I, I, I cut the cord. I don't have a landline. You don't have to be a uh, genius to know I need my phone. Right. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I said, okay, I'll go to, uh, make me an appointment. Then I said, I'll go to the AT&T store and I'll see who can give me faster action. So AT&T says, uh, well, we mail you uh, if on the insurance. We uh, send you a phone second day, so it, it takes two days. I said, "Well, today's Friday night. Uh, Saturday, I'm not going to get anything. Sunday, I'm not going to get anything. That means I'll get it on Tuesday." And so I said, "I need a phone." So I had this old Apple iPhone four in the drawer. <laughs> so, so they activated that. They activated it, and uh, you know I can receive and send. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's better than nothing. Sure. And they put my phone number on it. Did you get a new seven? No, I asked them. I said, can I take this one and trade it in and get the seven and pay, to, pay money? The difference. They said, no, you can't do that on the insurance deal. So what do you get? I get another six. Oh, you get plus. the six. Oh, yeah. on the insurance deal. I see. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's probably refurbished, too. Yeah, refurbished, and yeah. it's 112 bucks. Yeah. Well, there's nothing that much new in the new one anyway that, you know. Well, the camera, you know. Well, you know. What? Nothing. What are you staring at me? I'm just looking at see, you. See how embarrassing look, this looking is? Looking at you with Nobody, love. Nobody's calling me. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what makes a good radio you know, it's, broadcast. It's if it's just Phil and I by, by 11, I'm, you know, packing I pull, up. I'm packing this thing up. Well, you know, they're probably not calling because it's uh, you and me. 
uh, I, you know, I read a couple of Facebook postings of uh, uh, the same three or four people that, that hate my guts and uh, <laughs> well, on your Facebook. You know, I, I, you know, I hate your guts, too, but that doesn't mean I don't like having you on the show. I like you, <laughs> Phil. You make me Thanks. laugh. You, Thanks. You no, do. I mean, you know, I, I resent people who say, I won't listen to that show because that Phil Meyer is on that show. And I'm going, even hey, unbalanced. you're not going to listen to a show because somebody disagrees with you. And Damien wrote somebody back and he was very nice, you know, and uh, in what he wrote. And, uh, you know, I, I said to myself, well, maybe, maybe I'm the one that's uh, why nobody calls. But, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I was going to say the other night, hey, uh, if you get a full house uh, every night, I won't call. <laughs> so, but, you know. but we need you. you you're yeah, but, you know, you're 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 balanced. Yeah. You're you're you know, um, uh, uninformed balance, but you're <laughs> imbalanced. I said I was unbalanced. Huh? <laughs> I like the name that Alex has for you, Hobby Cop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, when when he would have needed a fix a ticket signed off, he would have been right over to me. <laughs> hey, can you take care of this ticket for me? Yeah, I, I could sign off uh, fix a ticket. You know, I never ever, I never ever fought a ticket. Oh, I, I have. I just when I got it, I just said it's too much trouble. I'll just pay for it. You know. Uh, that's because you're a big macha. You know, you know, I didn't even care. <laughs> I remember I actually got three tickets in three days. Wow. Uh, uh, and what it was when I was a kid, uh, yeah. I would come down off the hill in my car, and yeah. then there was this stop sign. Cops always waited there, but, huh? Yeah, but this was the kind that you rolled through, you know, the California stop, I think people yeah. called it. You just kind of rolled through it. Yeah. I rolled through it, and the cop stopped me and gave me a ticket. Next yeah, we, morning, I'm coming down. I roll through it. He stops me again. The third morning, he stops me and goes, oh, you again. <laughs> Did he give you a ticket? Yeah. Uh -huh. He had it pre-printed with your name. <laughs> yeah, with my name on it, yeah. Yeah, three, three days in a row. Uh, but uh, well, uh, oh. uh, uh. ah, Jason's calling. Of course, Jason yeah, has got to be we, calling tonight because and and now we'll go. we'll lose Phil's picture. The I'm wife sure. is gone. Huh? Yeah, well, the wife uh, is away. No, no. hello, uh, Jason. Hey, Jason. How's, how's it going? Oh, hey. I think maybe maybe we'll have. There we go. Hey. Both of you. Son of a gun. Look at oh. that. I didn't have hey, to see. I'm the phone guy. I know how to do it right to call in without losing Phil's picture. How do you do that? I don't know. I'm just magic. <laughs> oh, it's magic. I see. Because you're, you're just <laughs> blessing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How you doing, Jason? Pretty good. Yourself? We see you about every two weeks because that's when his wife lets him call. <laughs> God, you were so pussy whipped. Yeah. I mean, I've you know she's uh, she's a uh, she's a honey, and I so I don't blame you. Uh, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. It's pussy. You know? see, whooping is fine. Yeah. We're being joined by J.P. Wandershen. I hope I pronounced that correctly, J.P., uh, who has called us before. Hello, J.P. Hey, J.P. Are you there, J.P.? Hello. We don't hear him. We see a still picture of him, and we just lost him. Okay. Oh, call back. Well, thanks for the call, J.P. <laughs> call back. Oh. You know what? I like this iPhone 4. It's a nice size. <laughs> it's funny that's how what I, small That's what are. I had before was the iPhone 4, and I liked it a lot. And uh, I was very glad that they came out with the, what was it called, the SE? Yes, yeah, smaller yeah. one. Yeah, but I, you know something, though? I got to tell you, I like the the 6S. I like the big 6S one. 6S Plus. Plus. I yeah. like the big one. I because, do, too. I've got new... Because I can do more Which stuff. Like I can one. do more well, stuff with it. It's big yeah. enough that if I'm too lazy to take yeah. my iPad out, I can read off of it. And that's yes. nice. Let's yeah. see if we got JP now. JP, hey, are you JP, there? Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. I'm just going to check my video here. Be just a second. Okay. See? Okay. Well, at least we get, at least we have your voice, and that's important. Uh, um, have you found your camera there? But, JP, what are you calling in on? Uh, PC. I've called on this PC okay. a couple different times. Yeah. But... PCs usually work okay, you know? Is there a camera? Because because Skype is made by Microsoft. Yeah. They and it. they almost don't want it to work on the Apple. Yeah, but PC you know? still stands for piece of crap. 
was Skype originally a Microsoft program? No. Or it was started, remember? They I'm trying own to, it. They bought I, it. Oh, now, now you're starting to spin. There you there are, JP. Is. Yes, right. we have JP, okay. ladies and gentlemen. See, we've added one more person. We need more. Uh, but uh, and, and it's nice always to have somebody who isn't here usually. And we have two people here right now who aren't here usually. Um, and with that, I'm going to say good night. Okay, good night, dear. Mm. Good night, everyone. Wave good night, dear. Bye -bye. Don't worry, she's not wearing her underpants tonight. She I'm can just dressed. walk right out. Yes, and, I can. You know, there's no big problem. Good night, I'm dear. Sneak. Wave goodbye as you walk Bye. out the door. There you go. Okay. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Where were, where were we? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I like the size of the 7. I thought it would be a problem because I like to carry my phone in my pocket. Yeah. And I thought it would be just too big for my pocket. No, it's perfect. You know. The 6. Much, like the the six, six, plus. Six, a 6S plus. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, the two. But, I, you know, I keep it in my back pocket. Probably not oh, the best. That's idea. not a good place to put it. No. I, I'm thinking about getting a man purse. You know, uh, uh, you can put it. I put it in my front my pocket. Stuff. But you see, the only thing is, I have the the watch. Yeah. So I always have to have the phone with me. Well, I had a because man this purse is a brick in, unless you got the phone with you. In the seventies, I had a man purse, and you know what? It was pretty nice. You know something? I honestly believe that uh, it, because you're the type who would own a man purse. Yeah. Here comes Ron. I got it from France, and it was, uh, you know, it's what they would carry. Yeah. And you know what? It was very convenient. But somebody broke into my apartment in, like, 1979 mm -hmm. and uh, stole it, and I never replaced it. Hello to Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. Hey there. What's he, going up, on? he upgraded to Sierra, and I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, did you option to have everything, have your documents in the cloud? No. Oh, I did. Uh, your head's in the cloud. That's How do why. you undo it? That's the question. Because now it's all there. Cool. So I just shut it off. Just yeah. Turn it off and yeah. I'll delete uh, it. We have somebody on the phone. Who is this? Is this Jake? <clears throat> no, no. Oh. This is Mario out of Indianapolis. Oh, Mario. Mario, have you ever yeah. called the program before? No, it was my first time. I've been listening to you since you were on uh, Sirius. Oh, well, Mario, uh, welcome to our program. And um, anytime you want to talk, since you're on a, uh, you're probably on like an iPhone or something, right? You're on a phone or iPad or? Well, uh, even better, a Galaxy. A Galaxy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, you, you can't see us and we can't see you. Uh, okay. But so anytime you want to join in on the conversation, just yell out Mario and I'll say, OK, okay. Mario, what do you want to talk about? You know, OK. And here comes okay. Patrick. Boy, we're we're filling yeah, up. This is getting nice now. It's getting it's getting to be a family here. Right. Finally. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jason. Hey, since uh, Patrick just came on, it, I'm like a week behind again. Has uh, Scott ever called back? Yeah, yeah, Scott is uh, okay. fine. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Mario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Pat Patrick hasn't popped in. His picture hasn't popped in yet. Mario want to see. Are something. you there, Patrick? Scott's in Iowa. Yeah. He's there. Okay. Uh, what What did you say? Mark, uh, Mark, uh, Scott uh, in Iowa tonight. Yeah, he's in Iowa tonight, and uh, he called last night, but he said he's not going to call tonight because he's going to a beer fest and he wants to get right. Okay, Patrick. He wants to get righteously drunk. Okay, so that's uh, that's what uh, why he won't be Damn, calling. See, he should be calling in tonight then. Huh? Oh yeah. Say <laughs> so he should be calling in tonight then. But he didn't call last Friday because he had a football game to go to for for, his, for the school, and uh, then he had uh, you know Friday night lights, and then he uh, Tuesday he couldn't do it because his wife had what they thought was a stroke, and it just turned out it was low blood sugar or something like that. And so he uh, he couldn't call then, but then he uh, and then he couldn't call on w on Wednesday, <laughs> because he was traveling to Iowa. But last night, he, oh excuse me, in the Thursday he called us because he was in Iowa and everybody went to sleep early, you know, and he can't get to sleep that early. So Mario, huh? Yes, Mario. Yeah, I just want to say with uh, I I'm actually African American. I'm I'm a blacklist man. Oh, so you're, and, vo you're uh, voting for Trump for sure, right? Maybe, actually. <laughs> really? If Trump keeps <laughs> twittering. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, on, on the pol on, with the politics, I'm really not happy with either candidate. I, I really am you know, not interested in voting for them, actually. 
Um, I, I believe if, you, if you're waiting on one of those, either Hillary or Trump to save you, uh, you're doomed anyway. So I, I kind of believe in just, you know, you know uh, I honestly, take care of your family. And now so, you're, you're where again? You said Columbus, did you say? In, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Uh, mm-hmm. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jason. You have a shirt that says McKenney for president. Who's McKenney? You? Oh, it's him, Jason McKenney. Oh, that's your <laughs> last it's, name. It's one of those ink, uh, ink pixie T-shirts or whatever, where you get your last name put on a shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can buy that. Let's get one that says Patrick for president. I would vote for Patrick. So would I at this point. You know, uh, I can't believe that Trump is is up at three o'clock in the morning uh, dealing with this twenty year uh, ago. Well, uh, didn't they used to do a whole ad campaign saying is is this person prepared to for that three o'clock in the morning call? Well, we I know, he, we, know Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> we know we know Trump will be. You know. Yeah. But he, he's but he did all, all those tweets he was doing. Hello, Tony. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, uh, 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 he all those things he did um, were uh, what was I was I going to say? He uh, uh, it were all nasty stuff against this Miss woman. Universe woman. And, and unprovoked. And he's doing it at three thirty in the morning, and then another one at five thirty in the morning. Yeah, I mean. And maybe he's asleep and he has somebody else do them. That's what I'm suspecting. Uh, uh, nobody else could be that stupid. I, I can't believe he's dealing with him. Sleep. <laughs> yeah. so you're, you're, you're done with him? You no, your no, I told you he'd have to set uh, you know the next guy on fire, the commentator. Hey, he could shoot I, somebody in the middle of the street and you'd still vote for him, wouldn't you? Well, that's what he said. He's that's probably right. Said. <laughs> I I, the, I, hey, he, he could be a convicted murderer, and I'd vote for him before I'd vote for Hillary. You know, some, sometimes, Phil and Patrick, you got you got some dangerous thinking, you guys. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, with the and I was going to say, uh, I appreciated Scott getting apple, 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 apoplectic. Apoplectic, yeah. there you go, about the Black Lives Matter uh, with Patrick, just because, um, you know, Phil and Patrick kind of support the, the stop and frisk and and the cops, uh, you know, shooting unarmed black people. But if you if you, it's kind of like the the book that Alex always brings up about the Holocaust and saying that uh, there was nobody around to, uh, I guess, uh, save the last uh, uh, the Jewish people once you know it got down to uh, to them. You know, what book is that, Alex? I, I don't know what book you're referring to. Uh, that old saying, first they came for the unions, first they then came, they came yeah. for this. They, yeah. Exactly. And when they, come for, when they come for you guys, then there'll be nobody around to stand up for you. And yeah. they're just testing the, the tactics out on the blacks. And, you know, and you, you support that. The military uh, um, Humvee they have in with the armor and everything, and then once they turn the guns to, you know, the white people, then who's going to be around to save you? Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. uh, are, are you in fear of the police, uh, or you, you really are? And and have have you been stopped or anything, or... or uh, uh, I've them? been stopped, I've been stopped probably over a hundred times in my life. Well, and do you feel well, that well, that's because minute. you were black or because uh, you were doing something? Black. Really? Yeah. Now, let me, yeah. Let me, yeah, let me, let me to... ask you this, Mario, and please mm-hmm. don't be upset mm-hmm. at me asking this question because this is germane no, to no. the subject. Have you, ever, have, you, have you ever been uh, convicted of any crime? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. So consequently, you're being profiled. Definitely. Do you live in a in an area that is predominantly uh, one race or another? I, I did. This when I, most of those stops were back in about '98, and uh, back then, uh, you know, crack cocaine was kind of prevalent in the neighborhood that yeah. I did live in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's when we crossed a certain point, we were guaranteed to get pulled over as long as you stay within that neighborhood. You know, they were satisfied. Uh, after a hundred after a hundred stops, Mario. Didn't you get mm-hmm. to know the cops and they knew that you were okay? And they yeah, felt, yeah, know. right. They All black people look alike to them. 
You know, they were just. <laughs> That's what you guys they, say about us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you're if you're not used to, to white people, you would think that, like Asians. I mean, there aren't very many Asians in Indianapolis, so a lot of people think they look alike. But if you live on the West Coast exactly. in the California, you get used to, you know, yeah. seeing Asian people and you can distinguish them. Yeah, so, I, uh, but the, yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean, these guys, they, they're kind of like. Uh, hired to keep us in a corral. You were one of those cops, uh, Phil. No, uh, you know, the, the, I was in a predominantly the, black uh, city, a very right. white it, it, you, and, you probably uh, shouldn't have been there though if if you hadn't grown up with black people. Let me let me ask living. you. Let me ask That's you this: a white man. Hold on a second. Jason has his hand up. What, you, Jason? Uh, I was just gonna say because I do work in Detroit. Um, I didn't grow up in a predominantly. It was predominantly white where I grew up. But when I started working in Detroit and I'd come home, I did start looking at, you know, a lot of you white people, y'all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I say to Mario that, you know, when you work as a cop, you're you're a professional. You put a different hat on. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't, I didn't see color. And, and I worked with a lot of black cops. And, you have you know, to see color. Well, you have I, to see I, color. I would, <laughs> Let Mario let me let Mario talk, Phil. Yes, Mario. I was gonna say you have to see color. It's pretty obvious, you know, when I when I come up to another black guy I'll see color. So um, you know, but the thing is if you aren't exposed to black people, we look scary to you. So Trayvon Martin to me looked like a young guy on T V, but to somebody who wasn't used to black people, he looked like a thug or a grown man, but he, he looked like yeah. my son. You but know, I, to me I grew up in New York. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I was in the city uh, three, four days a week. Uh, you know, I, I grew up a little bit differently than maybe people that grew up in a, in a, in a very... Well, you, th you may think that you grew up more tolerant about blacks in being in it's New York, but I got to tell you, the New York that I lived in years ago wasn't exactly that tolerant. I mean, if you lived in Harlem, for instance, in fact, when we first moved into Harlem, yeah. you still couldn't get a cab. Wow. You, you know, you had to take the black cars. You had to take the uh, the livery cars because there, you know, the, the the if there was a cab up here, its light was off. There was nobody in the cab, and it was go. It had an off duty sign on, and it was going like a hundred miles an hour to get out of the neighborhood. Well, I tell you, every time in New York, I couldn't get yeah. a cab either. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. Well, what were we gonna so say, Phil, Mario? Mario. Yeah. Yeah. So, Phil, do, do you believe that when you're one world? You kind, of, you kind of talk about the one world government. So yeah, when they do, okay, so so when things get out of hand and they sharpen, so so to speak, their swords by kind of, uh, you know, trying everything out on the black guys, then who, who's going to stand up when they turn the guns to you? Because the guns that you have aren't, you don't have enough guns to go up against the United States. But they they and turned drones. guns on me, my people. They, they, in, in, in 70 years ago in Nazi Germany, uh, and you know, oh, oh. I, I would yeah, but uh, hey, Phil, right, right. Phil, so, here, here, wait a minute. So, so, here, wait. Let, let me just say where Phil's wrong about this. And then Jason's got his hand up, so I want to go to Jason. But um, uh, Phil, you're you're wrong in this respect. That was done, and in one particular place against our people. But right. since then, we have not faced that same profiling. We have not faced that same kind of uh, of uh, racism, anti-Semitism towards us that existed in that part of the world because the the fact was that Germany survived on creating an enemy and that was institutional anti-Semitism. Funny thing is, I remember my dad talking when I was a kid. My dad would have been in his mid to late 80s now and uh, if he had lived. And, you know, he was talking about the discrimination that he had received as a Jew, whether it was in the Army or even in Brooklyn but, when he was but growing up. that's then. I can't say that I have felt the discrimination of anti-Semitism, at least since I left Texas. You think that's okay. because yeah. celebrity? What, what? And that would have been no different than what the Irish went through or anybody uh, other European ethnic Oh, the Irish in this country, when they first came here? were just you know <clears throat> vilified yes jason but i wanted to ask mario about you know do you think that there's really actually discrimination against black people or do you think that a lot of black people end up you know living in neighborhoods where they're lower economic based groups and it's no, more of an economic issue not a cultural issue 
it's definitely an economic issue, but we're born into those neighborhoods. We're not, we don't move to those Oh, I understand that. Uh, that born. doesn't matter because I, I'm, I'm Mexican, man. You know, and we right. go through the same stuff. And, you know, you can go through Mexican neighborhoods where they're good neighborhoods. You don't mm -hmm. have the issues. But then you go into Mexican neighborhoods where they're poor neighborhoods and you do have the issues. And I think that's one thing that the African-American community needs to wake up and realize and, and come to a grips with. It's an economic based thing and start joining with other people who are economically lower on the totem pole and start including other people and start saying but, that maybe so poor lives Reagan. matter instead of just saying black lives matter. No, and, no, no. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Are we can I, yeah. can I, uh, by, by the way, let me what, just what, let me just say something. What, what, J, J, no, Mario what, was going to respond to something. Can we let him respond? Sure. Yeah, yeah but respond. before you do that, let me. Uh, just, I'll go to you in a second, Mario. Let me just tell uh, uh, JP that anytime you want to jump in, JP, you're welcome to. You know. Yeah. No, he just has to turn his light on. Yeah, he has to turn a light on now. Yes, Mario. Yeah, in, in response to that, um, I'll, dang, I, I lost my thought. Come back to me. I'm sorry. Economics. Oh, economics. I, I was yeah. going to say you're not saying anything different than Dr. King was saying back in the '60s that it's economic injustice. I do realize that, but uh, when you have Ronald Reagan, uh, you know, with the Iran Contra and funding a war off of your people, that that was in my lifetime, you know. And so the crack cocaine was a different kind of drug. It turned good hard-working people into zombies per se you yeah. know and and i saw you know women th that would sell their kids for you know a, a, a drug and um well let me you know america let, 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 let me propose this to you mario and see mm -hmm. what you think about it there have been those people who have felt and i have not been one of those people that disagreed with this theory the drugs were introduced into black communities by white men to sedate no, them. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Wait, I, let me, I, I, Phil, let him answer the question, please. I believe that, you know, that we didn't have airplanes, and so the, we didn't bring the drugs in, especially not initially. So when the drugs came in, that money ended up on the stock market. There were people who knew, you know, how to use that money uh, we were no different probably than a commodity on the stock market. You know, they had, um, you know, people can off the books invest money into, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a, a illegitimate business and then reap great profits off of it. But also so it also a, that the, 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 the idea that I got, and then we go to Tony and then we go to Phil, uh, the, the idea that was proffered was, that the drugs were also used as a, as a sedating factor and as a factor of, uh, of, of uh, p pacifying the black areas so they wouldn't rise up, you know, the lower economic areas. And that, that, that's why drugs were introduced, for instance, into Harlem years and years ago. Well, Alex, I, I, do, um, I propose this to you, though. I, I don't think, from a cynical point of view of that high up, I mm. don't think it was targeting blacks because now meth has taken over, you know, um, but... Yeah, Congress but this is years think... later from when that originally happened, is what I'm saying. By the way, right, Tony, right. Tony, he, Tony had his hand up. He yeah. very rarely has his hand up. So, uh, yes, yeah, Tony. Especially this kind of topic. And I, no, I, mean, I, I actually read the, uh, the book on Serpico, Frank Serpico, and, and when, he, when he broke the ring, the, the cop ring, he was saying that they had, I forgot what they actually called them again. They had, like... They had like flats in, say, Harlem, where in the Bronx, wherever it was, and they were taking the drugs. The cops were busting the drugs and then selling it back to the drug dealers, and they were just throwing it back on the street. So it's kind of like what you said, Alex. Really, well, they not, were not, the not, not exactly. What I'm saying up. is, I'm saying that originally, and I'm talking about back around the turn of the century, it oh. was introduced into these communities, uh, and especially into low economic communities in order to sedate and pacify the uh, the populace in those areas. I, Patrick, you've been quiet. Am I wrong about this? Does it sound like that's plausible? No. No? Why? It sounds like a fell theory of a one-world government. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, bullshit, so... 
Who, yeah. would, who would be behind that if that were the case? When you say they, you know, funneled it into those communities, who would that be? Well, you know, Wasn't you, there you, actually some people evidence smart. of the CIA bringing in drugs from South America to actually make money or something? Yeah, but they were doing that. They were taking, I don't think they were taking the drugs from South America. They were taking them, yeah, they were taking the drugs. Hold on, dude. From Columbia. from Columbia, from Columbia, it was cocaine. Or in, in order to, in order to finance the Contras down in uh, 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 Colombia, uh, uh, Nicaragua, yeah, uh, and uh, but uh, well, all I'm saying is that uh, that uh, you know drugs didn't really start happening. See, here's the thing. Here here's my philosophy. Uh, if you care about it, is that really the problem isn't a war against blacks or Hispanics or anything like that. It is really a war against poor people. I mean, it's a class struggle. Uh, well, uh, if it was a class struggle, how come there's so much black on black crime and that so many more people are dying from uh, black Mario. on black crime than, yeah, than they are uh, from uh, police officer interactions with uh, Mar I think Mario. Mario. Yeah, yeah, Mario. I mean, black on black crime is a misnomer. Uh, I mean, if, if you if you have a neighborhood full of Asians, then yeah. it's going to be Asian on Asian crimes because their exactly. quarrels are with other Asians. That's exactly so what I was going to say. Black, black, black people have quarrels with black people more than they have black quarrels with white people. This is not over white people. This is not over corals, Morel. What what happens? Then what do you murder someone over? It's not, they're not doing it for insurance money. Look look at look at burglaries. Uh, uh, oftentimes, the person that burglarizes in, in in an area is burglarizing their neighbors, and uh, then you know even if they know who it is, yeah, we're talking about black on black. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure if we go up to Westchester, murder. there's nothing but there's nothing but white on white crime. Exactly. You know, that, that's what he's trying Latino to say. Latino on Latino crime. Yeah. Right. But uh, it's a proxy. No, I see. Issue. We're smarter. We go into the other neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, get drunk before you come home on that cerveza. But, <laughs> but it's a convenience of proximity. If they, if you don't have a car because you're, you're just a, yeah. a, a, a yeah. drug, you know, a drug head, it's yeah. easy to go into your neighbor's house and take a TV the, than it is to drive to Seals Castle. In, 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 by, in the, by the way, oh, I just oh, I, I so want to announce it feels like old times here. Look at who has joined us this evening. Josh Wheeler. Hi, Josh. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. How's your life been going, Josh? Pretty busy. How about you? Pretty busy. OK. I mean, you got a better job now or things going good? Yeah, I'm, I'm working all the time. I don't usually have an opportunity to call. So I Josh, went ahead and called Josh, tonight. Yeah. We heard you were painting the town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're doing lots of stuff. <laughs> How, uh, uh, what, what, have you been hearing what we've been talking about? Let's see here. Do I have enough people to take one more? I do. Yep. Okay. We now have a full house. house, ladies and gentlemen. We've been joined by Jack Bishop. Josh, have you been listening to what we've been talking about? I heard about the last seven or eight minutes. Uh, sound like you were talking about black on black crime maybe yeah. uh, whether or not you believe the theory of drugs being introduced in the black community by outside sources to kind of hold the black community down i guess yeah yeah I, I, I did hear that do you have any opinion on that uh well the first thing that popped to my mind was uh, i guess two things uh one uh, I, I guess i i don't see a reason why uh you you would doubt it i mean it's not really a secret that uh we introduced alcohol to the American Indians in order to get them addicted and swindle them out of everything they owned. Good example. And uh, Why did you all... introduce the alcohol to the American Indians? No, that's then, not uh, that kind of Indian. I guess the second thing that popped into my mind probably shows my age is, uh, isn't it, uh, I, I don't know if I could, let's see if I'll remember and get it right, but isn't it, uh, wasn't it uh, Tupac who said, uh, <laughs> First, ship them drugs and let them deal to brothers. Then, ship them guns. Step back and watch them kill each other. Watch them kill each other. Correct. I mean, yes. you know. Yeah. So uh, I think I, I think your the answer, Phil, uh, is is lies somewhere where where Mario uh, was saying it, and and also where uh, it's convenience uh, and economics. No, it's also proximity. Yeah, convenience. There's, there's going to be black on if you lived in Harlem where there were nothing but black people living, then the crime was going to be black on black. 
Yeah, and and, and because at that time Harlem had become a a, 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 a pretty much of a poverty stricken area, you're going to have more crime, and that more crime is going to be against the only people that are here. Mario spoke up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was wondering, Phil, as a as a Jewish guy, uh, what does it just hurt you to sympathize with the, the bottom or the totem pole? I mean, it does. What does it hurt you uh, to say? You know what? Maybe maybe the cops are killing these unarmed black men, you know, out of sport or um, out of fear. I'm sorry, because I, I believe it's out of fear. You know, they're not used it's to seeing us. Yeah. I believe, it's I believe that on both sides, when you get two negatives that come together, they, they push away from each other. That's the way a magnet works. But, but, if I, but, but who has the right to be fear? I don't have a weapon nope. and you're pulling me over. Oh. So I have a I have a I have a right to be fearful. I don't see where they have a right to be fearful when they have like a utility it's, Batman belt. They, they and, don't know. And, <laughs> they don't know that you don't have a weapon. They could walk up to that window okay. and get blown away. Yeah. And, but they, that's my point. They they assume I have a weapon because I'm black. No, and that's, that's assume, the issue here. They assume you have a weapon because they're making a stop and they're fearful that even a, a 90 year old lady okay. could shoot. J Jason, but why are you fearful? You stop me. You have the element of surprise. You're the one that's been trained. You know, you have the upper hand. Okay, so the fact matter. that you're fearful, the fact that you're fearful of me is a problem. But it's, you're not a war. it's not a war. They're just doing their job. I, no, it is a war. It is a war. Uh, when you, when these, these guys, fair. I don't feel, it, these are not guys who even look like thugs in my eye. But once Sean Hannity takes the picture, then they're thugs. But these guys look like normal guys like me, just going to work, trying to make a living for their family, trying to supply, you know, food, shelter, and clothing. Every single one of these instance, instances, those people have been innocent civilians like you and I going to work and trying to provide. None of these guys have been up to any skullduggery or I, I, any I ill intent. I think that you're lumping a whole bunch of people and, and making them uh, innocent bystanders. I think you're getting this. I think you're, we Phil? can go down the list. What was Trayvon Martin, Martin doing? He was Nothing. wrestling with some guy who was uh, in the... Some guy uh, who attacked night. him in the middle of the night. Some guy who had no authority to stop him and, and speak with him, but demanded that he pay him attention. Well, that is two sides to every story. It looks like uh, no, uh, no, there aren't two sides to every story. Look, 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 look at that case. I mean, the kid is the kid is dead. Okay, the kid is dead. It's a kid. He's dead. Yeah, but, but you know, you know like what, what are you trying to? What kind of behavior are you trying to excuse here, Phil? Well, Why don't uh, you say, hey, this he wasn't even a cop. You don't have to defend him. Yeah, well, you know, his, uh, you know, it was a phone conversation. Uh, playing on 911 of the interaction, and it sounded pretty uh, uh, pretty bad to me. Uh, uh, again, who, who, who initiated I don't know who initiated it. And yeah. you know, you know, Zimmerman stopped him. No, he initiated. I, I know that Zimmerman is not. Yeah. not a, Hold not on a, a second, it, it, both of you, because Jason has something he wants to say. You know, and first of all, I think the. Uh, one thing, I, it's actually a couple of points. Mario, when you said something about as a Jewish person, you, you have to remember back in the 60s, it was actually the Jews who were sticking up for the black uh, rights and everything. And that's why. Riding on the freedom buses and all that. And that was just, my point to feel. Okay. All right. It just it sounded like you were coming off not knowing that. But um, the, and part of my point with I agree 100% Trayvon Martin should not, nothing should have ever happened there. But everybody after that started wearing their hoodies. You know, when you're wearing your hood up and you're walking into a 7-Eleven and it's a sunny day, that kind of says something to me. It, well, are you a white woman or are you a black male? Are you a white woman walking into 7-Eleven? It, it doesn't matter what the hell it, you are. No, no, but I don't guys, care what you are. Hey guys, can I jump in here for a minute? My camera's not working, so I don't know whether we're even connected. Yeah, you were connected, Jack. Jack Bishop, who runs the intersection. Yes, Jack. Uh, By the way, another black guy. If yeah, I'm glad there are two of us tonight. My God, I mean, the next thing you know, <laughs> we'll be singing Kumbaya. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, the thing to remember is that the black experience in this country is a strangely unique experience. No, it's not. We, 
We had to wait several hundred years to, to even begin to try to acquire that American dream. And you still call my people Indians that are from India, from Asia, when we're yeah. natives. Yeah. You know, one of, the, one of the big embarrassments for me is when I hear black folks talk about the Ninth Cavalry. Any of you guys besides our Native American uh, uh, ancestral friend know about the Ninth Cavalry? That was the, the, uh, the U.S. Army unit that went after um, um, Sitting Bull when they should have been going after Custer because we had more in common with, in our situation with the American Indians than we did with the Anglo community. But the real telling point about America and its relationship with people of African descent was in an article that I saw here a few weeks ago when a number of people were asked, how much money would you have to get to trade places with a comparable black American comparable being in the same economic situation mm -hmm. as you and nobody wanted to do it yes pa uh, Pat Patrick has his hand up yes Patrick let me just say this from my own perspective I've been asked and you may or may not know that I'm in a wheelchair that oh I know would you trade places with somebody to be able to walk again and my honest-to-God answer is no, because everything that I've experienced since I've become paralyzed has made me who I am and has shaped who I am. So I wouldn't trade places with anybody. I w I'm just fine paralyzed. You know, at one point in his life, this is a true story, Ray Charles was told that they could operate on him and get, give him sight again, or at least limited sight. And they said, do you want to do it? And he said, no. He said, I've gone most of my life blind. I'm used to being blind. It, it would just completely throw me off. You know, it would just change my life. And I see, I know what you're saying, you know. Uh, by the way, the reason your camera probably isn't working, Jack, is we have a full house here. And, ah. and Skype does, has a hard time dealing with that. In fact, Jason, we just kind of lost his picture for a second here. So. Uh, well, I'm so relieved. I thought it was once again on my end. I will live patiently and wait till yeah. uh, top of the hour. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, we do have on our panel. Oh, there's Jason again. We have Jason. We I should say who we've got. Uh, J.P. Wondershand. Uh, is that pronounced that correctly, uh, J.P.? Wondershand. Ronda, Wanda Scheid. Oh, I see. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, and uh, we have Mario. Uh, he's in, again, um, uh, Indianapolis, right? Yes, the city I got, of Indians. Uh, the city of Indians, yes. Uh, That's what it means. And Tony yes, Magnolia. the city of Bronx. Indians, and we have lots of 7-Elevens. And in Texas, we've got Jack Bishop, host of The Intersection. Phil Myers out in California. Rob Alfano's down in Delaware. Getting closer all the time, Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> I keep, I don't know, uh, you know, I look, I'm so, forget it. Uh, Patrick, of course, is in uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, Josh, again, where were you? I can't remember where you were from. Ohio. Ohio. So, uh, you yeah. Know. Uh, uh, Josh, you have any thoughts on what we're talking about? I mean, I guess nothing more than what I added before. I mean, I, I, I only heard the just a few minutes there before I came on, but I, I didn't find your uh, theory to be preposterous. That, I mean, I don't find that really wait, wait, your, mic, your microphone is kind of breaking up, I think. Uh, it, yeah, my yeah. connection hadn't been too good tonight. I'd lost you guys a bit, too, so yeah. can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can or? hear you fine now, yeah. Okay. But, uh, no, I mean, I believe that. I mean, I, I don't, I mean... I still see the lack to decriminalize drugs as for the for the very same purpose. I mean, I hate to stop or I hate to continue to quote Tupac lyrics, but I mean, I thought he was pretty he was pretty observant at some of the stuff that he read or that he wrote. I mean, 
you know, listen, I mean, it's, instead of a war on poverty, we got a war on drugs so the police can bother me. I mean, that's not, I, mean, I, I, I believe a lot of what he said, that's all. Yeah, Mario. Uh, but first, first, let's go to Jason. He had no, his hand Mario up. was first. I was raising my hand for him, but then me second. No, you go ahead, Jason. Go ahead. Uh, I, uh, I was just going to say, you know, if that was a plan, you know, and it doesn't surprise, wouldn't surprise me at all, for to release drugs to kind of hold a, a certain ethnic group down, or even not even an ethnic group, but maybe a town or something like that, hold them down. Haven't they realized that shit don't work? Well, you know, holding down, I don't think, was the ultimate goal. Reagan got what he wanted. He, he bought guns. <laughs> the, the other thing, everything else was just a side effect. He got what he wanted. He bought guns. Yeah. Um, just he, That was just a bonus in the process. He got to hold, you know, the African-American people down. But, 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 by the, the way, the, J- Josh, you have a, uh, I think, a loose wire there that's kind of making some crackling sounds. Yeah, there we go. Mute. Okay. Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. The one thing we, the one thing we haven't been able to recuperate from is the prison industrial complex. I mean, it's still we are still the the main, uh, uh, I guess you want to say, uh, filler for the uh, a prison industrial complex. Uh, that's everything from housing into into the you know the entire judicial system, and um, you know it go it ties in with the Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. You know because if they don't take your life there on the street, they'll take it through the prison industrial complex. Uh, but, t- Tony Magno has his hand up. This is a question towards Mario. Then, so Mario, what would be one of your solutions that you would like to see change then? I mean, you're pointing out about, you know, reforms for the jails, this, I mean, what would you like to see done then by the people or by the cops? Or do you have an idea of what you would want done? I, I mean, just a like this, point, but I don't have any solutions though. Just like this forum that Alex has invented. I mean, this, I listen to you every single night, uh, every day of the year. Hmm. And I have since uh, Sirius. You know, well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you decided. Movie. I'm glad you decided to call, and I hope you'll do it more because you're really good. You know. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. a lot. Um, but uh, you know, this forum allows people like we have uh, Native Americans, African Americans, Jewish Americans. We're all Americans, but this is a forum that allows us to speak with each other, and and then that way we don't we aren't afraid of each other because. If I was a police officer and I pulled over an Indian American, but I'm a, or Native American, but I'm familiar with Native Americans, then I don't have a preconceived notion of him based off of his, you know, appearance. I'm going to take him at face, you know, it depends on how he approaches me or interacts with me. But if I was to pull over a Samoan as big as the Rock is, Dwayne Johnson, and I'm afraid of Samoans because I never met one or I've seen on TV that they're violent people. I've seen, uh, you know, everything I've been told, they're violent, dangerous people. And he has size, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm quicker to reach for my weapon. Okay. But having, have having, been, having been uh, uh, stopped a uh, hundred times, as you said, uh, mm-hmm. are there any people that, you're afraid of just because of who they are? I mean, it, 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 is there any of that racism in you in spite of the fact that you know what it's all about? I'm actually a truck driver. Yeah. And, I, and, and most, of the, most of the time, I'm the only black guy everywhere that I go because I'm in, you know, rural America. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, I don't fear anyone. It's all about how you deal with me, you know, as an individual. But I can see people lock their car doors a lot of times just because I walk, they saw me because a guy maybe got, you know, I don't know, 20 feet from his car. But then when he sees me, he, you hear the horn, you know. Yeah. Beep, beep. Well, you weren't too concerned about the lock, you know, the car door being locked prior to that. But you double check. <laughs> you saw me. So I know that you, yeah. you, you're kind of weary. Jason, American Indian. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I lived at one time in the Mm -hmm. artsy-fartsy area of Dallas, which butted up against a very, very affluent area on the north side. And uh, I pulled up to a stoplight just on the edge of my area going into that moneyed area. 
And this uh, woman next to me in her car looked over and locked her door. So being the kind of crazy son of a bitch that I am, I reached across my car and locked my door. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fight absurdity with showing people how absurd the situation really is. Yes. Jason has his hand up, and we always defer to the American Indian. <laughs> Native. I am not an Indian. But... <laughs> Um, it's 21st century, man. I can't believe that's still such. And if you but, guys hadn't been smoking that pipe and passing it around to them Europeans, we'd all be better off today. I could be home in Uganda, <laughs> running a damn country. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know the, the, it's going to come off bad, I think. But, you know, I know Jack, because I've seen him before. He, he doesn't have this look, and it's because of his age or something. But I think a lot of times... In certain communities, you know, it, it's more of trying to have this hip-hop thug look to yourself. I have What's to wear my pants around thug? my ass. I have to be looking like I'm a gangster. I have to be look. You know, I, I work in Detroit. I see it all the time. And Mario, I'm sure you don't either because you're a truck driver. And <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of truck drivers. I don't care what race you are. I you still look like a thug. But, you know, I, but that's one thing I will say. In my personal opinion, if you're trying to look a certain way, I am going to judge you. Mario. Mario. Uh, Mario it's, it's it's called, it's, it's called Go ahead, pop, just, Jack, let Mario answer the question. It's called pop culture for a reason. Pop culture has been imitated by every American since the invention. I don't know. I, I, like said, I don't care what race yeah. you are. If you're going to wear your the, pants around no, your it, ass and you know, you're going to be walking, you know, but I agree with him. I agree. I agree with him. What you're talking about really is pop culture. It may not be your pop culture in your neighborhood, exactly. but it's a pop culture in somebody else's neighborhood. And the kids have a tendency. It's usually kids. You don't see a 50 year old guy or a 70 year old guy like Jack wearing his uh, showing his ass crack. Uh, I'm sorry. Unless, unless he's I'm 30. Uh, what, what, what? This is Mario. Yeah. I'm 35 now, but I, I once I, at one one period in my life I wore my pants hanging down because that was just you know part of pop culture yeah. and what we did. Right. But I grew out of it. Well, actually, pop culture kind of grew out of it because that's not really a fad any longer. J it is. J you know? J Wait a minute. Hold on a second. JP has had his hand up and he hasn't said anything all night, so I want to hear what he has to say. Well, so um, I remember Dave Chappelle had a show, um, a comedy show, and he said, you know. I'm on the streets in the clubs, and I see girls that are dressing like a prostitute. They act like a prostitute. How am I not supposed to think that they're a prostitute? It's kind of like, again, in his comedy routine, he says, if I'm out in the street, I'm dressed like a cop. I got a cop gun. I'm driving a cop car. You'd think I'm a cop. You come up to me and say, well, I need help. I need help. When I was Mario. younger. But and let me you'd say, no, yeah. no. I'm not a cop. I'm just dressing like one. I just look like one. So I kind of, mm -hmm. kind of second Jason's thing. If well, you're, why, you why? dress like a stereotype, a lot of people are going to give you that stereotype, whether well, it's true or not. Uh, let, can I answer that question first, Mario? Before we go to you, when I was in know. my, when I was in my thirties, I had hair all the way down to my shoulders. Okay, I used to. Uh, I was a hippie. Okay. And you smoke pot too. And didn't and, you? and and believe me, I could not get a cab in this town. Okay? Because of the way I looked. Because everybody felt that was menacing. You know, and you could say, "Why did I dress that way? I dress that way because my contemporaries dress that way." Mario. I, is that Mario? You just uh, you just yes. jumped in. Yeah. And then Phil. You you you're right. You're right, Alex. And in addition to that, when when you see white guys imitating uh, um, bikers, you know, you don't assume that they're actually doing the things that are done on Sons of Anarchy. You just oh, kind of yeah. walk past them. Come on. They're, they are across, pulled the, over. across the street to walk on the other side of them, too. That's right, Mario. That's not true. I'm can white. I, can I, I jump in here for a minute and ask a question? I get nervous when I see some white guy wearing a 10-pound cowboy belt buckle Wearing a uh, cowboy hat and cowboy boots, because you know those are the folks that here in Texas are usually ready to get on folks like me. Yes, Phil Myers had his hand up. I gotta know something, Mario. 
when you when you wear the pants down around your uh, tuchus, do you have to hold them up, or do they have special suspenders? How do you keep them from falling yeah, down? Yeah, I've always been amazed by that, too. How do you keep them from falling down? You know, I got to know. With, with the belt. With the belt. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's really the pants, the, the, the design of the pants that makes it, you know, that you get the baggier pants and uh, maybe a size too big. And then, you you know, you, you use your belt and you tighten them up. But I see a lot of, you know, it, it just. And you wore you them, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but you wore them because your contemporaries were wearing them that way. Oh, you were laughed at if you wore tight pants. I mean, in my neighborhood or at school. Okay. It wasn't cool. Yeah. But, hey, See, but I me mean, and you, Mario, are, we're the same age, and you said you grew out of it, right? I did. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my pants no, are still... No, like, actually, I said pop culture grew out of it. But, but pop it culture didn't. went to skinny and that's, jeans. That's the thing that... Jeans are in. But they still, they're wearing the skinny jeans below their ass now. Well, because with of... Their, be, with, their, with their boxers hanging out, know, I don't get because it. Of, I always want to go and, and make fun of these lot, kids. A lot of those guys who, who, who wear them below their butt, they're self-conscious about their body. Well, it, it's funny because of my age and my contemporary group, I, I wear my pants up around my chest. I bought my first pair of suspenders this year because I have no ass anymore. Yeah, me. I want. I want suspenders. I, I was thinking about getting them myself. Girlfriend because... bought me suspenders, but I refused to wear them. <laughs> Everybody who wears them says that they're comfortable. You know, and uh, and you know, I'm tired of my pants falling down because you know, well, I got my pants belly don't fall no down edge. anymore because I lost all that weight, and uh, so now a, a good, decent sized pair of pants and a good belt will take care of me. Yeah, you know. Well, not all of us can be that lucky, my dear friend Alex. Yes, you can. All you have to do is stop eating. What? <laughs> Just eat protein. <laughs> what? Now, Mario, that you also said you're a truck driver. Have you been driving while you've been talking to us? No, I pull it over, yeah. but I've been driving for 13 years. Yeah. Well, you know, I really want you to call again because you're terrific. I mean, you are you should be a regular. Uh, uh, and, and it's taking hey, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Mario, this is the black guy. Call my show. He's got everybody <laughs> calling his show. Yeah, but I got too many Call white guys show. here. I, You know, I have Phil Meyer is so white that when he goes out into the sun, he bleaches. <laughs> Phil, 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 Phil has a uh, Phil is kind of what, what I'm trying to say is I think Phil needs to take in consideration his white privilege um, at the end of the day and and be more empathetic to other cultures and and, and realize that their struggle is a different struggle. Ariel, so, can I answer you? Uh, I, I, I the years that I did police work, uh, I I pulled over cars. And I couldn't see who the occupants were until I got close enough. I worked a DUI unit, and all I did was look for drunk drivers. I was looking for headlights out. I was looking for guys weaving over the line. I was looking for stuff that had nothing to do with color. And on and, and, and top all, of all of that, it was a everything hobby. Did, everything that you listed was probable cause. Right, so that's if a guy's like, weaving, but, a, but these guys, these other guys are being pulled over for a... Busted tail light that isn't busted. Yeah, Walking the, home with the Arizona you know, key. The old joke. Um, the old joke go, joke goes, know, Mario, I, I, that it was a DWB driving while black. Driving while black, and that's what I have an issue with. Because when they're, you know, the guys you're talking about are low hanging fruit. Here's what I know? don't. Here's what I don't get, Mario, and here's what I don't get to the whole panel. And maybe, maybe this can jump it off a little more. With all the concentration. And all the um, observation and, and concentration on, on, on white cops in this country, or police departments in this country, why they're still going around shooting people like this is beyond me. Alex, because they're, they're, they have immunity. They're, even, the, even the cop that was found guilty, uh, I think in New York, uh, didn't even receive jail time. I know the problem. So, I know the problem. You know, when we practice, when cops practice uh, shooting, they shoot at silhouettes. And what color is the silhouette? <laughs> it's, it's a joke, right? It's not, it's, but it's not funny when, you're, when your family, yeah. when your family is, is lying dead in the street. 
and the guy didn't do anything. And then they they give the money, they 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 give a little bit of money to the family, and uh, all is well, just like they do, you know, in Afghanistan when they accidentally bomb, uh, uh, you know, a hotel. They give fifteen hundred dollars to each family member and say, "Oh, we're sorry. Here, spend this money and have a good day." Can I show uh, a good family? example? Of, a good example of how this works out is uh, uh, Cleveland. Uh, was it Cleveland Bundy? I can't ever think of the guy's last name. Help me, Alex. You know the guy that held the uh, uh, government at bay uh, out in the West for days. Oh, yeah, guy yeah. in Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the now, hero. You, you can damn sure bet your last bottom dollar that if that had have been a comparable African number American. of African Americans, it would have lasted fifteen, twenty minutes at best. Well, how long? I, I disagree, man. You know, I disagree. Just... That's my take. Many, there's that's, too many that's times. We don't have to agree. That is my take. But I'm saying there's too many times where, you know, like, like in Michigan, the, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a guy who was riding a motorcycle, riding a crotch rocket, and he's wearing a full face shielded helmet, wearing gloves, and he was the, chased down by the cops. And finally, the cops ran him off the road because he wasn't pulling over, and they said it was because he was black, you know. It, he was covered from head to toe. You couldn't tell what color the guy was. You know, and there's there's just certain unjustified Mario. things that you know people will say that oh, if the guy was this color, this would have happened. You, you well, can't tell. That, you know, that's Mario. from the experience that most yeah. black people but, but, have have witnessed. I do, don't forget, I'm Mexican too. My people have had and just the same as bad. Thing applies. It did, look, the first major story that I was involved with when I came to this part of the world was a 12-year-old black, uh, sorry, a 12-year-old Hispanic kid, Mexican kid, being shot while handcuffed in the back of a Dallas squad car. Shot in the head and killed. And it didn't make it past the local news. Oh, today it would have. No. No, today it would have. You know, because... just, just like, what was it, three years ago, a truck driver was carrying a truckload, uh, a semi-truck with like 60 Mexicans but, in the but back here, of but, it but, but, and but killed them all because he parked his truck somewhere, got scared, and he got, but, he got here, charged with involuntary manslaughter. Here's, here's what I'm saying, Jason. The, the fact of the matter is the eyes, Hawkeyes, are on, on the police now for this sort of thing, and it's still going on. That's the part that just absolutely amazes me. Mario. Yes, Mario. It's because you have you have majority of Americans like Phil who approve of it. And 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 and, and, and unless you mm. put pressure on the legislators and you know and uh and march in the streets, then everybody says, Well, you know, of course the guy had saggy pants, he had dreadlocks. I mean, what did you expect? Yeah. Uh, uh Patrick has his hand up. Is it also possible that the reason it's still going on with the Hawkeye on the police department is that some of these stops are legitimate and the cops don't see color? That it are is we gonna, legitimate. But are we talking stops or are we talking about the murders of innocent it's unarmed about people? All of it because what Alex brought up is all the eyes are on the cop now. Why are they still doing it? Because they still have a job to do. I mean, if, if what you're asking, Alex, is why are they still doing their job? Well, because that's their job. Oh. They're doing a terrible job. Though. Well, they're, no, but, they're, but, they're, but hey, Mario? Mario, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah. And then we'll go back. To, Jason's got his hand up, and then we'll go to you, uh, Phil. But, uh, Mario, you, you said you were literally stopped 100 times, and yet you have never had a criminal record. Uh, and and so the, to me that seems rather extraordinary unless it is racial profiling. Thank you, Alex. I, you know the type of car I drove is just like uh, the guy in Minnesota. Uh, that was his issue. Uh, the type of car he drove, uh, you know, the screen pulled me over. So uh, back in 1998, you know, they if you had what we call box Chevys. Uh, if you still had an older style car, uh, you know, that that's when, mm -hmm. um, you know, they started moving to like a, a bubble shaped car in the automobile, uh, you know, um, world. If you still had a box Chevy, they would pull you over 
and, and ticket you. Yeah, I'm going to ask Josh something here. Um, do, uh, we currently have a what we would call a deadlock Supreme Court, Josh, because you're the you've always been the the expert on that part of the world of the uh, of this country. Um, do you do you really feel that the do you feel that the uh, uh, Congress was right in saying we're not going to put in a new Supreme Court justice, or that was just an excuse to keep Obama from appointing one? Well, I would have to give. I mean, I, I think I'd have to give two answers. One, I would say no. I, I don't think they were right because I think they have. I mean, I, because I think doing it would be the right thing to do. I mean, you know, a president appoints somebody, you vote for it. If you don't like the guy, then you don't vote for the guy. But I'm not going to go so far as to say I think what they're doing is, you know, uh, criminal. Right. You know, I mean, no, they, it's they not, can do it's it not if they, want, they, they can, don't want to vote for it. They, they can do I it, mean, but it's, 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 they're not doing their job. Let me put that. Uh, okay, but that see, that's where, that's where I criminal. always, that's where I, but I don't think so at all. That's where I always go back and say, okay, if it's really that big a deal to people, then these fuckers are all be gone in a few more months. But you know as well as I do that that is not what will happen. There will be very little, if any, turnover of the people that we deem responsible for that. Therefore, why would you expect things to change? See, I, I always go back to that, okay? We're all going to sit around and crow about it, about how wrong it is, and it's just, it's just criminal, and, you know, they're, they're just, they should be just treasonous. And hardly not a one of them will be voted out of office and replaced with somebody else. And so whose fault really is it? Is it the hundred people who are doing it, or is it the hundreds of millions of people who refuse to do anything? And who are it? voting for these people. Yeah, right. here's the reason that happens. Everybody is upset with... Somebody else. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Josh. Your cord is, is uh, it's like yeah, you've got to. And I think that's, uh, in there. you know, I agree. You, you're going to say okay that now. you always think that your senator is so great, everybody else's senator is so bad. Yeah. That's yeah. the real problem. But, you know, I've got the solution to this, and I'm going to throw this out. No, true. i got to go get ready to do a radio. Uh, 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 Whatever the hell we call this. This isn't a radio show. This is a, know, this is you know, uh, this is I, this is hobby radio right here. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. good. Like hobby. Uh, it's better than radio. <laughs> Thank you, Mario. Yeah, go all ahead. All of this becomes academic. And Alex, you disagree with me on this. When America is vanilla fudge ripple with salsa and soy sauce and uh, that those great Indian tacos all together, and and we look like Brazil. Well, outside of the fact that that is one of those saccharine descriptions I've ever heard. And I think, uh, I think uh, what's uh, an Indian taco? <laughs> what's an Indian taco? That's something up in Oklahoma that they make that I love, I, and they call them Indian tacos. So, Mario with curry. <laughs> Uh, well, I think it's probably with buffalo. Yeah, yeah. But what the reason, the reason I was asking that is because, you know, I wonder how a balanced Supreme Court would vote on stop and frisk. Because I don't think stop and frisk has ever been brought before them, has it, Josh? It's, it's stop, ask, and frisk. They, they stop, they stop, frisk. Uh, well, I'm sorry. They, I would have they, no, they, I would they, have they no, I would have they, no. They argue. ruled. What? It was actually ruled unconstitutional, uh, I believe, in, in New York, and they, they haven't done yeah, it. Yeah, but I'm talking about the years. Supreme Court. <laughs> it's never been brought before the Supreme Court, has it, Josh? I don't think uh, the, the, the current, you know, system that we have of if you're talking about what, kind of what they implemented in, in, in you know, in New York. Yeah. I, I really don't think has reached that level to be decided in a once and for all matter the way you're you know the way we have the health care issue and the gay marriage issue and that yeah. and that kind of thing I, I think there are some cases in lower courts that may be moving that way but as you know it, it, it takes quite a while yeah in many cases mario. Before it gets yeah. There. mario yeah i i wanted to bring up one more topic alex and then i had to jump off of here yeah um but 
the bomber um, or alleged bomber in in New Jersey, um, I heard a story on NPR the morning after it happened because I think he, you know, did everything on a Saturday. But on Sunday, um, I heard the backstory on Sunday, but I, I haven't heard it since. Um, it was something to the effect of his family was being harassed uh uh, for being Muslim, and there was a guy who, there, who showed well, up at the actually, store. Actually, their establishment was being harassed because the local neighbors felt it was they were open too late and that it was too noisy, is what, uh, and, what the reports and said. And it, it was a comment made about the guy being Muslim and needing mm -hmm. to, to go back to Afghanistan, and, and, and there were some things, I guess, that pushed him over the edge, uh, and that's why I think ISIS isn't claiming... Uh, him as one of their, you know, as a, having allegiance because this was a personal grudge. But people like Giuliani and and Trump, you know, will uh, hold him up as a, a, a terrorist, um, you know, in the na name of Islam. When really this was kind of like a, just a personal grudge this guy had because his his family uh, were being treated like uh, third class citizens. If yeah. you're white, you're a criminal. If you're brown, you're a terrorist. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well. But I, I just hadn't heard the media, you know, um, exploring that story or even, you know, um, you know, touching on that on that fact. And then they had the mayor, I guess, of New Jersey, um, of the city that, that the guy was living in, and he was he was going crazy on TV, uh, just about you know some of the facts of what 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 was stated, um, kind of. You know, he was kind of, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? He was kind of, uh, you know, yeah, giving but... the okay that this story was uh, was legitimate, you know. They said he was blowing up, I don't know if it's true or not. I re Didn't they say on the news that he was blowing up stuff in the backyard practicing? Yeah, I think so, I mean, yeah. I walk the dog in yard. I don't blow shit up. I mean, really, that's a red flag. Doesn't come up and say, oh, look, Junior's outside blowing up the garage. Did that guy live across oh, the street from you, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, 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 the fall, and, and one, more, one more thing, Alex. Yeah. Actually, they called it, they, they did discover a terrorist about two miles from my house. Uh, it was a guy who, well, I didn't call him a terrorist, but he was trying to join ISIS in Brownsburg, Indiana, exactly two miles from yeah. my house. And, uh, you know, the police, but he was a high, he had just graduated high school. He actually went to high school with my daughter and he graduated about two years ago. Mm. So I, I'm not going to say that there aren't terrorists, you know, in America, but, you know, uh, it seems like if you're, you know, a uh, Muslim or have an Arabic name, they automatically label you a terrorist when you do something. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I think what, what's, getting, what's getting dangerous about that and what's getting Such dangerous cool. about the atmosphere that, that Trump has created in this country at, the t at this time is that uh, the Muslim community, which, you know, let's face it, most Muslims are, uh, are uh, uh, decent uh, people living here, whether they're, you know, uh, uh, naturalized or whatever. Uh, and and the few people from ISIS who may infiltrate into this country are not those people. And yet here we have a presidential candidate condemning an entire group of people based upon their background. He didn't do that. You're you're generalizing and you're taking out of context his statements. No, I'm not taking out of context his statements. We shouldn't let people from Muslim countries into our country. I mean, uh, here, here we have we have eight people. We have eight people here, and nine including me. How many here feel that Trump is anti-Muslim? I don't. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't feel he's anti-Muslim. I, I believe both of these candidates will say anything to get ele elected, Dang. and they'll play to their base or they'll play to who they think will vote for them. Well, but uh, Hillary, I, I listen to them on the debate. Debate who's more racist, you know, Hillary or Trump? I think Trump's got a big ego, like the size of a mountain. Well, I think he says what's on his mind, and what was on his mind is the government was not doing a good job. Yeah, but of it's a really ugly. Mi it's a really ugly mind, Phil. <laughs> Factual Factual Wait a minute. Let Rob say something. Rob just wanted to say something. Factual hyperbole. That's Donald Trump. 
factual hyperbole. Yeah, but let me tell you something. When somebody comes into this country and blows something up, they're going to be blaming everybody else for not doing their uh, due diligence and vetting the people that were coming in. Yeah. But like I said, like I said, Phil, the guy was living down the street and he could have blown something up. So why are we so against people coming into the country? By the we way, already have people in the country. By the way, we've that, just been uh, we've we've been uh, joined by another minority, a woman. We're an A. Are you there? Oh, okay. Can you guys see me? And I can't no. see, but we can hear you. Okay. So I would like to ask the panel a question, and I'm sorry, Mario, for stepping on you. How no, many? How many of you individuals own a hoodie? Any kind of hoodie, I own any a color hoodie. hoodie. I, I was wearing my yeah, hoodie today because it was raining here. Yeah, I wear one. I put my hood up anytime it's raining. Yeah. So most, I've, yeah. I've only met probably two people I've, I've ever asked that question to that have said no. I and never, that I, includes that includes psychiatrists, psychologists, any doctors that I've ever met. Most people own a hoodie. Well, I, I you guys, own, pardon? I've never owned a hoodie. I, I actually own the most pussy hoodie you can have. I have a Pixar hoodie. <laughs> yeah, yellow Patrick. Jackets that they put you in when you're in kindergarten. Patrick. Um, I don't own a hoodie. I don't own any sweatshirt. I don't own any sweater. And I don't own any long sleeve shirt. I don't, <laughs> yeah, you got I, I don't like long sleeve shirts because being in a wheelchair, wheeling, the cuffs keep coming down yeah, over my yeah. wrist, and they're impractical. I also hate wearing jackets. I so Republicans don't. Republicans don't wear hoodies. That's what we get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Especially crippled ones. And, and I try to pull my pants up around my chest. But, <laughs> but see, she's still. But they're still. But yeah. the point of all of this is, is you're trying to blame the victim, which is exactly what men try to do to women. And as I was listening to you well, guys talk about this, that's early, a rationalization too against men. Yeah. As yeah. I was listening to you guys talk about so much bigoted really, stuff in my life, you said that if she looks like a hooker, I, I'm gonna just think she's a hooker. Well, I got news for you guys. If you've ever been into London at night, those people wear lingerie to nightclubs, and I'm not joking. So you can't just go to any other country and spouse this bullshit. And you we're not talking about any other country. We're talking about well, our country. You know, if she, it, 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 and my, she shouldn't be doing yeah, it in ours. My theory is if she dresses you, like Renee. a hooker, she must be trying to be Beyonce. So, oh, you know, or Kim Kardashian. <laughs> we all want that. But who, 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 decide, who decides what normal is? Who decides what? You know, not dressing like a thug or not dressing like a hooker. But it's yeah. what you're oh, trying to portray. Everybody, you know, JP, if JP, you're trying to portray a certain aspect, and that's I'm sorry, yeah. that's what I'm I'm my you know coming off of. If you're trying to per, you know to persuade, uh, <clears throat> you're trying to dress like something. You know, yeah. again. Uh, JP, Again, wait, a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. JP has his hand up, and he hasn't said much tonight, so I want to hear what he well, has to I say. I was the one that said that, you know, if you dress like a prostitute and you act like a prostitute, um, and then you're miffed you if people think that you might be a prostitute. That's not, I'm not saying that you can't dress the way that you want. I guess right. what I'm saying is, uh, why are you surprised? But if, if, if somebody you, might say, "How much?" What's What's interesting today yeah. is is and that it's, it's a reflection on you. I mean, the person that's perceiving it as much as a yeah. yeah but my my question today is, how does a prostitute dress so you know she's a prostitute when everybody else is dressing this way too? Fishnet stockings and the boots that come up to the thing and hot pants. Oh, are really? you? Oh, that's your. Are you? that, uh, oh, what, what are you? Are you going to hook? back in the 70s what is this well no, you drive down the street they you know in oakland or something and that's that's what they look like mario the mario yeah so phil so phil when you sell in carpet i'm sure you you put on a polo shirt correct yeah okay and when you're wearing your motorcycle do you wear that same polo sometimes sometimes you know i've got a vest uh that uh Mother. you know holds the patches and uh, I, a T-shirt, and uh, and so you, you stereotypical motor, 
you didn't dress like a stereotypical motorcycle rider. So if you and you got that from pop culture, you didn't come up with that dress style on your own. So no, if it's, it's okay for you to dress like you're from Sons cool. of Anarchy, no. why can't a guy dress <laughs> like he's Tupac Shakur on his spare time after he takes his suit off? Because my thing is, is says law enforcement on the back. It doesn't say. Uh, oh, Phil, there you oh, go, boy. Uh, JP's it says got Lex his. Talianus. J- JP's got his hand up again. Yes, JP. But I was going to say, and I know Robin said this, but if I had to see a guy that's dressed like he's from Sons of Anarchy, I'm still in the oh, back of my mind, whether it's right or not, I'm going to think my first thought is going to be he's kind of acting like a guy from Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. And I, I can, I might dismiss it and go, oh no, you know. Um, and it's, I don't care what Phil with his baby face. I don't care what he's wearing. He can't hide that. <laughs> I bet you he's club Phil, does the clubhouse have a little, little cop in it? Should you go in? Uh, we don't have a clubhouse. No? No. We live off the generosity of others. You know, it, it's funny, but, you know, if you go to England, the racism against blacks isn't, isn't really very strong. But the racism against Indians... Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, huh? Dot or feather. We're talking about Mumbai as opposed to uh, uh, reservation, okay? Uh, uh, but Indians are, are over there. I mean, they, they, they have names for them and all of that, you know. And I think that in every country you go to, there is some group that has been singled out to be the one that is being just uh, oppressed. oppressed. Uh, I mean, even if you go to a country like Africa where everybody's black, then it's a matter of light blacks versus dark blacks, one tribe versus another. I mean, and it goes on and on. And I think this is an yeah, it's element. Not right. It's not right. It's not right. And it's 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 a part of our world it's, which we've never been be able to seem to, we've never been able to seem to get rid of. And it makes, if you think about it, racism makes no sense at all. And profiling, therefore, makes no sense at all either. You know? It's almost like we don't know each other. It, 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 well, uh, we don't want to get to know each other. Yeah, that's a, yeah. you know, that's, Doesn't that go back to the... Um, didn't we talk about, was it this week or last week, that they talked about the cops not being on on the beach, so they didn't know the people anymore? Is that ultimately... Oh, that has a lot to do with it. That has a lot to do with it. The police are, are so separated from the public in their day-to-day work. I mean, the only time they ever deal with the public is when they get out of a cop car, and, and the only time they ever get out of a cop car is when there's a problem. If right. you're going to police it's, a neighborhood, you should live in that neighborhood. Right, Absolutely. That's what I brought up the field in the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah, they should get subsidies for that too, though. I don't. I don't. I would think that if we gave them free housing to live in that area, that that would make things a whole lot easier on the on the police. But what is it in human nature that we have to put down another person? What is it in, in us that we have to find something? Well, wrong in my case, it's being a talk show host. <laughs> it's competitiveness. It's. Uh... Uh, you need to be better than somebody. Yeah. Somebody has to be on the bottom because that if they if they aren't, you might be. That's exactly, right. Alex. Exactly. You know. And I think that I think that 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 that's perpetuated by people when when they have the the you know the mind thought like Phil has. Are you calling uh, he really me a bigot, Mario? <laughs> no. Me? No, he's you not. Know, all no, I've no. listened to you spout <laughs> off about me and the police and, 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 and that uh, I'm a Republican and I uh, don't treat black people Well, he right might way. have an attitude, Phil, but he's... Phil, you, but after, Phil, you're my favorite panelist because <laughs> you come in here and you take, you take the punches. Yeah, no matter, no matter how much Alex gets mad at you or people <laughs> writing in saying you should be on the show. You call night after night, yeah. and well, you entertain yeah. me for hours while I drive down the road. Well, hey, just listen, I, I, I made Alex a commitment, and I always keep my word. Yes, his commitment yeah. is to never I wish you. I wish you commit to being on the side of these uh, the black guys getting killed in the street, because yeah. what do you have to lose, Phil? Yeah. yeah, anyway, hey, listen, the that's theme, what, the theme is playing. Trump says. <laughs> the theme is playing. Another show is awaiting. And this has been one of those shows which I will like uh, uh, put in the time capsule as one of the more perfect examples of a citizen panel tonight. There's been a great discussion. Jason, thank you. JP, please call more often. Mario, if you don't call again, I'm going to come out there and get you. Okay? (laughs) 
Oh, oh, okay. yeah. Tony, always great hearing from you. <laughs> Renee, glad to hear from you, even though it was a little bit late in the show. Always nice well, to have that. Huh? <laughs> what? I said you didn't have room for me. Oh, well. <laughs> I had a full house. Yeah. I know. Phil Meyer, thank you. Rob, always, you know. And Patrick, you know. I feel great about you. And Josh, would love to hear from you more often. We, we yes. have missed you. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Hey, everybody. Nice. Bye bye. Again. Okay. And that's it uh, for our uh, citizens panel. And let me just uh, do a little closing off here of uh, various and sundry things. And uh, for those of you uh, uh, who, uh, who listen tonight, you listen to, I think, a really good show. Okay. And probably a prime example of what the citizen panel is all about. I'm exhausted. It was a lot of work. But anyway. Thank you so much for your uh, your attendance here. The Intersection is next over most of the same station, followed by the Connections. I'm Alex Bennett, and as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay, hey everybody, uh, the TV people, I'm, I'm taking this opportunity to say goodbye, and thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, it's... Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.